Try to keep it as funny as possible. Comedy can be t comedy can be tough when you're not funny. You see? <laughs> The same way that being a priest can be tough when you've got Tourette syndrome. <laughs> That's, uh, no, you'd be going the name of the father, Andrew, smell your maw. <laughs> Just you calm yourself, Farrell. <laughs> Let's finish this guy's funeral. <laughs> A double dip recession. That's what we're calling it. That's what we're in. Double dip. I don't even know what that means. That, that used to be a good thing. Double dip. <laughs> Since when was that a negative? These fucking bankers have ruined dip dabs. <laughs> I used to think of orange and cherry sherbet with a swizzle stick. <laughs> and you think of government cuts. I, I don't fully understand it. I read last week America. They're in $16 trillion a debt. That is fucking unacceptable, isn't it? How the fuck do you get into $16 trillion? Surely somebody at the IMF's got to go on the phone. Look, you fucking got till Friday. <laughs> Trying to make us look like pricks here. $16 trillion. America or skin. Europe or skin. I hope Africa have got some good rock bands, because we need a concert. <laughs> That's my solution. It's their fucking round. <laughs> <laughs> I can show some appeal videos. <laughs> this is Gordon and Diane from Bishop Briggs. <laughs> oh, I can't watch these videos. <laughs> Why do they always show you this stuff when you're having your tea? Do you notice that? <laughs> Gordon and Diane, like so many others, took out a fixed rate mortgage. <laughs> Everybody's going off. <laughs> the world can be such a fucking cruel place. <laughs> Puts things into perspective. It was only this morning I had the cheek to moan about having to walk 20 miles for clean water. Then you fucking see this. Every time I click my fingers, a newly married couple from Dumfries have a credit card application rejected. <laughs> a double dip recession. I've got mates who've lost their job. I know people who have went beyond unemployed. I've got people in my social circle. I've got friends who I can only describe as being unemployed as fuck. <laughs> I know that's not fully utilising the English language, but that's what's being created these days. People who have just been forgotten about, people who are unemployed as fuck. They've just been forced to embrace the rut they're in. They're sat at home, they've got their routines, homes under the hammer, then it's man versus food. They're, <laughs> they're fucking adamant they've been missold PPI. Every 15 minutes, you see that advert on the phone, where's my fucking PPI in it? <laughs> I don't know what it stands for, but I would like it back. <laughs> I need that money so I can adopt a snow leopard. <laughs> I feel for them. It must be tough. Under the coalition government, I love their proposals for the job crisis. David Cameron and their guys, these, the work experience programmes, creating jobs for people, just like normal jobs. The only difference being you don't get paid. If you're unemployed, you get to work, but you don't get any wages, but it's to boost your self-esteem. That's how fucking condescending. That's what people need. Last Friday of the month, I'm going to go and check and see if my self-esteem's in. <laughs> Feeling a bit low. Oh, thank the Lord it's self esteem Friday. <laughs> Gonna try and pay these bills. Hi, is that British gas? Listen, mate, I'm skint, but I feel terrific. <laughs> <laughs> I'm London. Are you prepared to accept self esteem? <laughs> or maybe I can go on Skype and just smile at you. How's that? <laughs> Do 
To stop people slipping into depression, David Cameron said about the work experience programmes. Pound stretcher. They were one of the first shops to sign up to these programmes. Working in pound stretcher for no wages. That's pretty fucking depressing. <laughs> Working in a shop where everything is worth a quid except you. About as depressing as it gets, and I'm like, you look at these guys. Now, what the fuck would David Cameron know about being unemployed? Now, he's never been unemployed as fuck. He's never. <laughs> David Cameron's never woke up at three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> he's never had a packet of flaming hot monster munch for his breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> David Cameron's never known that feeling of waking up at three in the afternoon and your only goal for the day is to try and piss a skid mark off the inside of your toilet. <laughs> now when you start seeing that as a challenge, OK, that's been three days, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I could use the brush, but that's admitting defeat. I'm going to get a glass of water, I'm going to fucking reload here. <laughs> I'll be two minutes just trying to get a hard on, get a bit of pressure on this. <laughs> I still, I still take public transport. I know some of you probably don't believe that. Sat there going, fucking no chance. That's Kev I.N. Up oh, well, fucking no way. <laughs> <laughs> I still take the bus. I, I don't drive, that's my problem. I've took driving lessons once in my life, but I took them in London. And if I was there for three months to fill my days, I thought I'll do something productive, learn how to drive, well, try to learn how to drive. Driving lesson in London, it's just you and a guy parked in a traffic jam. After about <laughs> 10 minutes, he starts saying, okay, mate, well, that's Radio 1, just press that in there. <laughs> uh, that's your cigarette lighter. Just give that a few seconds there, buddy. Don't know if you smoke, but that should be good to go. Uh, <laughs> glove compartment. Don't know if you wear gloves, mate. That's where to keep them. <laughs> if your hands get a bit sweaty. OK, we're now going to reverse back. 15 yards, we'll drop you home and we'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs> that was as far as I got. I was on a bus up here about six months ago and a guy got on, he put his money in. The bus driver said, how much is that? And the guy said, it's £1.70. How? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Glasgow, how means why. I don't know why that is. You, you don't say £1.70, why. You say £1.70, how. <laughs> <laughs> you don't ponder why, you demand how. <laughs> <laughs> he said, £1.70, how? <laughs> and the driver said, well, it's £1.85 for a single. And the guy said, it was £1.70 yesterday, you fucking dick. <laughs> Classic negotiation tactics. <laughs> <laughs> but the driver held his nerve and he said, well, it's £1.85 today, you fucking dick. <laughs> it was good. So on public transport, you see a battle of the wits. Look at this. And the guy just lost it. He said, £1.85. I don't want to buy the fucking bus. <laughs> He's doing that sort of appealing for witnesses. <laughs> and it goes on, and it, the guy starts punching the bit of perspect to get to the driver. And over years of taking the bus, I have familiarised myself with the onboard safety instructions. When a guy kicks off with a driver, don't even fucking look, just turn, look out the window, stare at the chewing gum, and go to a happy place. <laughs> have a bit of me time. <laughs> I wonder how many fish fingers I've got in the freezer. I'm pretty sure I've seen there were three. I need to stop eating odd numbers of fish fingers. <laughs> that was inevitable. There was going to be three left. Now, what the fuck am I going to do with three fish fingers? That's not a lunch or a tea. That's just no man's land. 
I'm going to have to have one of their Tuesday night dinners when you put a gammon steak and then just chuck the three fish fingers on as well. <laughs> Something in combo. <laughs> Wherever you go in your happy place, you start to find that you get to know yourself. I looked at the window and there was a stationery shop. I never knew I liked stationery until that minute. <laughs> Well, now, well, that's a fucking great deal on rubbers. <laughs> when was the last time I rubbed something out? <laughs> I might go in there, buy their rubbers. I might buy a pencil, sharpen it, a nice new pad, nice sharp pencil, write my name, and then just fucking rub it out. <laughs> By the time I'd come back in for a landing, this situation had been resolved. A good Samaritan had put the extra money in just to get the bus moving, and the guy was on. He'd made it. Everybody's bracing themselves. Where's he going to sit? It's quite a quiet bus. I'm just going, fuck. <laughs> the guy's on. And it was then I, I realised that I was, I was sat in the seats that are designed for conversation. You know the seats that face in opposite directions? <laughs> for people looking for stimulating debate with like-minded folk on the world's big issues. Speaker's corner, that's where I was sat. <laughs> and the guy, he came in and sat right opposite me. He never recognised me, oblivious to the fact he was sitting opposite KVIN. Never fucking like that. <laughs> <laughs> and the bus, the bus is pulling away. He, he's not going to a happy place. He's looking at that station. He's like, I might go in there and buy a pencil, sharpen it and stab him in the eye to fucking wank up. <laughs> <laughs> the bus is going on and he started talking to me. He said, where are you going, mate? And I said, I'm just going to meet my mate at the cinema. And he said, I've not been to the cinema. I've not been to the cinema in fucking ages. Right? <laughs> and I said, oh, all right. He's <laughs> <laughs> still struggling for small talk. You need to keep it going. You don't want the guy thinking you're benignant. I just said, oh, all right. And he said, do you ever see that movie, Social Network? That's what he asked me. And I said, oh, the movie about Facebook. And he said, correct. <laughs> As if you survived that fucking round. He said, that Mark Zuckerberg, he's worth billions, mate. And I said, oh, I can imagine. And he said, how? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, he's the owner of Facebook. And he said, aye, but how does that make money, mate? It's fucking free. <laughs> and you don't laugh. The onboard safety instructions tell you to do not. <laughs> In order to avoid a punctured lung, keep your face firmly. <laughs> keep your face firmly on screensaver mode. Just He said, if I was in charge of Facebook, mate, I'd be saying fucking quid a go. <laughs> and it gave me a small sense of hometown pride, but I realised the guy was serious. <laughs> small sense of hometown pride that there must be very few places in the world where Mark Zuckerberg would be offered financial advice <laughs> from a guy who was 15 pence short for a single <laughs> fucking bus. <laughs> Have you shown our broth? I don't know if I, he made the papers, a guy, he walked in about 10 seconds late and I said, how's it going, sir? And he, he looked at me with fucking venom in his eyes. He was just right there. And I, not a way you can tell when somebody's kidding on and when somebody's fucking mental. <laughs> I said, I'm just saying, are you all right, mate? And he said, no. He said, I'm not all right. <laughs> he said, in fact, I'm going to kick your cunt in. <laughs> Uh, even in Scotland, any English folk here, that's aggressive. <laughs> I'm going to kick your... <laughs> I was a wee bit taken aback, but another guy in the audience leapt to my defence, and I apologise for the language in advance here. I'm only quoting this guy, and it's probably the most beautiful sentence I have ever heard. <laughs> he said, you're arse. <laughs> you're fanny. <laughs> you're going to kick no cunt's content. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've had a laugh, hope you've had a, a smile, you know that sort of stuff, some jokes make you laugh, some make you smile. Thank you.